Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here with a new Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D Lite tutorial on getting started with working with animation and motion curves in Cinema 4D. So if you've been following the series along so far, we've created this 3D logo. We've added a lot of custom materials and lights and an HDR image to create and light our 3D scene that we have here. And now we need to start animating it. So if you wanna quickly review those videos to get set up, you can do that by clicking on those thumbnails where we talked about creating the 3D logo and adding custom materials with reflections and reflectance as well as lighting this. So be sure to do that if you wanna follow along up to this point. Or if you're just looking for some quick tips on how animation works in Cinema 4D and how it might differ from something like After Effects, we can just dive right in. So what I wanna do is have some camera animation, the logo moving, and different properties of our logo animating in different ways because we can do a lot with animation in Cinema 4D. So all I have here is a camera which we can jump out of to take a look at our scene and we'll animate our camera as well as some different properties. So in Cinema 4D, you'll notice there's this timeline down here and this is just a mini timeline of our scene and it'll show keyframes based on whatever object we have selected and we can animate a lot of properties all at once with these buttons down here. So what that means is let's say we had our logo and we want to have it move and rotate all at the same time just by moving in the viewport. What we can do is select any object or null object. And with this system, check on which properties we want to set keyframes to. So we could do position, scale, rotation, parameters, as well as point level animation if we had paths. So we'll just do position and rotation. And at the beginning of my timeline, I'll set a keyframe. Now, once I want to set a second keyframe, I can move ahead in time. And then I could rotate this. So let's say it rotates around one time. And you can see over here in rotation, it's updating and our circles are not filled in. So what this means is if it's gold, we've made a change to that property, but not updated it. And if it's red, we haven't made a change, but it still hasn't been updated. So if we did something like moved it back and up, in addition to rotating it, you'll see that those light up gold. So it differs from After Effects as an example that auto keying isn't on. If we wanted to work with auto keying, you could press here. Otherwise, it's important to note that there isn't a keyframe here yet, and we need to click this keyframe button to make a keyframe. So what that's doing is creating and recording keyframes for all position and rotation properties. If we back up and play this, it's going to spin around and move in X, Y, Z and record those. And if we want to quickly go to the beginning or end of the timeline, we can do it with shift F and G. Also, when we play this, you'll notice that it automatically adds in our easing. So it doesn't just hit a wall. It kind of slowly animates. Now, again, it's important to remember that this little timeline is just for whatever object we have selected and just shows that there are keyframes there. So we could grab this little blue keyframe dot by clicking and drag and moving it. And it's going to move all of those keyframes. But if we really want to manipulate them separately, what we'll want to do is go to window timeline and here's our logo and we have a view of all of our keyframes. If we want to move around this, we can hold the one key and drag as well as two and it will scale things vertically or horizontally. So there's our keyframes and the different ways we could view how it's animating. If I just move this over here is for each property, we could dig down in there so we can see that we have position X, Y, Z animating. And you can see that it's smoothly animating and easing in and out. Now, if we want to view only those curves, we can click this F curve icon. And based on whatever we have selected, we can see our curves. Now, one thing that you might be noticing is there's a lot of these going on and it can be a little overwhelming if we're just trying to do one controlled movement. In this case, I just wanted it to rotate and move a little bit, but we have all these sets of keyframes and there's all these different lines. So for that reason, I'd have to say, unless we're working quickly, this method of checking on these blue boxes and keyframing all these properties can be a little bit of overkill and we can simplify things a bit without adding all those extra lines and keyframes that might not be doing anything. So if we just want to reset this completely, we can either hold shift command and click to turn off these or just click and select these keyframes and do delete. And if we go to coordinates on our object, we just want to make sure we're back to gray on all these. Again, by pressing shift and command clicking. Now, say we don't want 
that crazy of a movement with it moving all over the place and rotating a lot. What we can do to have a lot more control is just animate and change one property at a time and adjust our curves accordingly from that. So let's say we wanted our logo to just rotate from left to right as the camera is moving. How we can do that is get it in our first position. So we'll pull this rotation H over here. And then we can just click the little circles once to create a keyframe and you'll notice it lights up red. And then we can go ahead of time, let's say to frame 60, make an adjustment so it's rotating to the right. We'll get our little circle. That means we need to click to update it after making a change. And then we have only keyframes on that one property of rotation without adding all the other ones. So it's a much more controlled way. And if we play, now we get just that little rotation. And if we wanted this to be a little more precise, we could even replace this and just type in negative 30 degrees, update that. And at zero, let's start it at negative 100, just so we have whole values. And then we get this rotating animation. Now, if we wanna adjust those eases and what's happening over time, we can go back up to window timeline and it's gonna show our objects that have animating properties on it. We can see here we have our rotation parameter that we just added in our key mode. And if we wanted to see only that curve, we could go into F curve mode. And again, there is what is happening to this one parameter if we select it over time. So if we selected all of the points and change this to linear, then it's not going to be easing at all. It's going at a constant rate of speed as it's rotating and then stops on a dime when it gets here. And if we grab those and add our spline setting back, we can get those curves and adjust them to change how that easing is working over time. So now if we wanted to create a different animation with the same points, we could pull these. And if we pull them, we're going to see when we play, it's going to slowly go out and then really snap out and then really slow down. So we get a completely different animation happening over the same 60 frames. And one cool thing you can do with this F curve editor is create anticipation and overshoot. So if we think about something like a pitcher winding up at the beginning or a swing and going past where it's going to, and then bouncing back, we could grab either of these and pull it beyond its starting point. So it would go from negative hundred degrees back up to negative 120 and then snap out. And we could do the same thing with this one if we wanted it to pass and go beyond the ending point and then settle back in. So you can use this anticipation and overshoot concept to really create some interesting animation while keeping things to only two keyframes and without having to worry about a bunch of extra keyframes for each position. And with that, that's kind of the point of working in Cinema 4D or 3D animation program is if we look at our logo or any objects like our outer main shape or our extrudes most of these settings have this circle where we can create animation so we could very easily create a pretty dynamic animation with this building out we could grab this outer piece and let's just say 60 is the end point that it animates to and then we could go to the beginning and have it at 10 so it's much shorter so we get this piece building and it's as it's rotating and we could even animate multiple properties at the same time. If we know that we want all of these to end up at the same spot, but they have different values because in our first extrusion process, we talked about stepping this through. So the pieces go from 70 to 80 to 90. We could grab all of these extrudes, even though we get this multiple, we could turn on our stopwatch at our second point and then back up to the beginning. And instead of changing it, because that's going to make them all consistent, we want them to be progressively animating. We could type in a variable, which will represent the different values. So we could type in X minus 20 or X minus 30 and update that keyframe. And now they will each have their own keyframe but they'll be starting at different values of whatever that final one was minus 30. So we could have them each build out individually. And then if we go to window timeline and look at our key mode, 
And now we have all of those properties that we can see down here all animating. And we could adjust those and have them staggered by dragging them and moving them. And if it ever looks like something isn't showing up that we have animating properties on, what we can do is go to view and change it to automatic mode and it will update and show all our properties or go to view show and make sure we're on show animated versus having it off, which shows everything. And again, that way we can quickly animate lots of properties. So now we're animating all sorts of stuff and just adjust our keyframes as well as our F curves for each of these and really create a pretty unique animation with all this stuff building and drawing out and rotating. So we could keep going, we could add more camera animation and do lots of stuff, but that should be a good starting point to understand working with animation in Cinema 4D and the different things we could do with adjusting our F curves and eases and add some animation to this thing because that's the whole point, isn't it? So from here, we'll talk about bringing this thing into After Effects and adding some compositing elements like linking optical flares to it and really bringing the two programs together and everything you can do with the Cineware connection. So be sure to check out that next section of this whole series on creating a 3D logo in Cinema 4D or Cinema 4D Lite and After Effects. And if you want to learn more about Cinema 4D or After Effects, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials and videos on all sorts of stuff like compositing, motion graphics, and visual effects. There's a lot of videos covering lots of topics, new features, and all sorts of stuff. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash seanfrangella if you want to get frequent new tutorials and videos and you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella if you want to ask questions, request tutorials. And if you want access to these project files or any of the project files from any of my videos, you can get a hold of those by helping the show out on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. It definitely helps us support the tutorials and the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.